late. Hey, hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another Creator Spotlight. Creator Spotlight is a place where I can introduce you to all of the creators that are inside the Creators Club. We have some amazingly talented ladies in there and so this just gives them a nice little introduction to all of you um today i have a special guest i have karen hannah and she is with sunflower hill market how are you karen i'm doing great how are you kelly i'm good and it seems like we're coming in a lot better now so we're just a couple minutes late we had some tech issues going on but i i think we're good now well, good. So, Karen, I'm so excited to talk to you today. I think you're, you've are you been in the group. You're probably one of my originals or close to it. You've been in there quite a while, haven't you? Yeah, it's been a few years. Yeah. yeah. And it has been such a joy to watch you grow. Your art has just like leaps and bounds. It has just grown. And it's just amazing. It's been so fun to watch you. Um, so, yeah, so first it's, of all, it's been fun to do. It's, uh, I've only been doing it a few years. I had other mediums that I did before and it's just been since, uh, I retired and my husband passed away. I thought it was always something I wanted to do. And so I get lots of practice. Uh, I, had some art set up of course my studio it was not working in there and i realized i have no art from last year i oh. it all, all but a few pieces and i did not even realize that not that i created a lot of art because last year i moved to be closer to my son because i was the only one left in san antonio and uh it turned out to be a year long experience. Yeah. So, Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I lived in San Antonio. We lived there for 27 years. So you accumulate. Mm -hmm. My son lived 150 miles round trip. So I felt I needed to be closer. And he lives on a ranch uh, outside of Austin, Texas. And uh, so I moved to a little tiny itty bitty oil town that's about eight miles from the ranch. And uh, it took four tries to get a house here. Very few houses come on the market. So uh, finally, what I did, you know, we've been in COVID. Uh, the house I bought is very old. It's a 1927 little cottage, itty bitty. And I have it's so cute too. Yeah, and it's I've had horrible. the garage converted into my art studio to get it all out of the house. So, and I've been posting. I, I'm sure some of you have seen. I've been stenciling the floor, and it's almost done. And I'm almost ready to move in, and I can get my house in order. My guest room is is horrendous, and that's been my life. And I've been making a little art in between, and. Uh, like I said, I was shocked. I didn't realize I sold all of last year's art. So yeah, that's, that's, that's a good. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Uh, I, I don't even remember doing it because everything's been boxed up for so long. Yeah. You know, it's you really don't can't track what you're doing in business when, yeah. you know, you're kind of camping. I spent yeah. four months at my son's that I didn't anticipate. So, I mean, my business really kind of shut down. Yeah. So, but I've learned a lot of lessons. So, good. I, I really enjoy watching your art, and I just, yeah, I love, I love your style. You have your own kind of style now. I love that. Um, so, you said that you've only been creating art for the last few years. However, did you always like maybe when you were a little girl? Did you always want to be an artist, or was that just something that you know you never really thought about I, until later in yeah, life? I wanted to. I wanted to go to college and get an art degree and my parents i grew up in ohio so you probably kind of understand my parents wanted me to do something sensible like be a nurse or a teacher mm -hmm. and so of course i didn't do either of those things 
So, you know, I've always struggled with what I want to be when I grow up, yeah. but I've always been creative. I mean, you know, I learned to embroider and sew and uh, all of that. I sewed for many, many years. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. I made all kinds of things at sewing and I've always been creative. And then I went into interior decorating and had a 20 year career. That's so amazing. I, I enjoyed that. But after, after my husband passed, I really didn't know what to do with myself. And I'd never been on YouTube and I discovered, uh, and Facebook and I just discovered Dion one day I was watching a Debbie beard actually. And D, it was the first time Dion was ever on there, I believe. That was in 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was going to do furniture. And then I realized I was getting too old to move furniture by myself. <laughs> so I happened to take- I don't believe that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm up there. I really am. And uh, I- took a painting class. Uh, it was a finger painting tutorial. And I just, and it was Dion's. It, I can remember it vividly. It was March of uh, 2019 was my first time I ever touched a canvas. And I loved it. I've read about painting in all the different mediums all mm -hmm. my life. Collected brushes, but mm -hmm. never, never picked up a brush to paint. You know, <laughs> other than a few odd pieces of furniture. So, mm -hmm. but I fell in love. So, I, and that's my passion. And and I can tell when I look at your work, I can, it just, it's so beautiful. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm, my goal this year is to really study techniques. Color has always been, color theory has always been something that I've loved in color history. Mm -hmm. And I'm really getting into understanding warm and cool and mm -hmm. the different layouts of your palettes to achieve mm -hmm. those things. I'm trying to track down values a little more in my work. And and it's, there's a lot of into it and a lot of work. Yeah, yeah there I, is. Yeah. There is, and, and I feel like it is true. Once you study color theory and you really Put it to the test and you kind of like when i was learning it i know i had to do it i had to do all this stuff i i was reading the books you know i started off way back before we had all the internet and everything and i'm in the library this was back when i had the baby and i'm trying to study more and buy a book you know a book in the yeah. library and until i got to the canvas or you know, even on paper and, and put it to the test. I, it didn't click with me. I'm just that person. Exactly. So, yeah. So I kind of agree with you, um, getting those techniques and just getting out there and doing it. Is yeah. Wonderful. I've been watching a lot of oil painters because, and I paint on acrylics and, uh, I've learned a lot about color and that, and I haven't quite nailed down shadows and that yet but i'm i'm working on it and some different styles i don't know where i want to land you know right i'm i like i like so much of it yeah but i and at the same time i'm tired of experimenting with a lot of different things i would like to establish maybe mm -hmm. a series or a collection yeah. of something yeah it would make me feel i guess more organized because i I'm kind of a person that likes to be organized yeah. to a certain degree. Yeah. So. And it is kind of when you start to go um, to show your work and you want to put your art up somewhere, it is nice to have a cohesive collection to show mm -hmm. and have a portfolio to where you can, you know, say this is this is what my style is and it, and it has kind of a cohesive look and it marries well together. It's kind of very good for, I think, when you show people, right? Yeah, I think so. I, I don't know if I'm going to go as far as, you know, maybe art shows and that type of thing. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm interested in, you know, I'm, I'm past my 60s, <laughs> let's put it that way. And I'm interested in, older women and 
you know, so many, I see in so many groups, older women that are in there and they're overwhelmed. Yeah. And I think part of the problem is, is they're so caught up in learning everything as far as the painting goes, whether it be furniture or canvas, that they don't realize the business end of it. Yeah. And there's a lot of work in the business end of it. Yeah. And uh, I think it frustrates a lot of them. Yeah. So uh, I think someday, maybe, I don't know, I might might do a little group or something. Oh, nice. To mentor women that are on the older side. Because so many of you are, are younger. And you've got a, a lot of distance still to go and still have room time for learning mm -hmm. you have to accelerate it when you get older if you're just starting out in it so i think you have to make a decision of whether it's going to be more of a hobby in a small business or whether you're trying to you know empire build uh you know it takes time right so. and i think even if it is a hobby um there are still people as a hobbyist that still want to maybe do um, little shows here and there, um, and even like the Facebook Marketplace. So I think that would be wonderful to see you kind of. Um, well, and and that. I want to branch out into the, into some of those areas. I just haven't had the time. Yeah. I had no idea that COVID had affected the workforce so much, yeah. especially in a little town. And oh, it took yeah. forever to get that garage converted inside. Yeah. And I didn't think it was ever going to come to an end. And now I'm in there and you know, when it gets, when it gets below 50 anymore, I don't want to even walk the six feet out the door from the, my back door to my garage door. <laughs> I do not blame you one bit. <laughs> and we've just had a cold spell. So, you know, I'm getting close to being able to seal the floor and I, you know, I need some weather cooperation here. Yeah. Be glad you're out of Ohio. So I can, I am you. so thankful. Girl. <laughs> the last time, I lived in Ohio. I told my husband, I says, we have to go south or west. I can't take it anymore because the highway had been closed for three days. And I thought, mm -mm, there's no lighting a cigarette lighter under a, a handle of a car to unlock it from being frozen. So uh, I'm too old for all that. <laughs> yeah, I am too, really. But I do miss, I, I, there's several things I miss. I've lived west so long now. I miss peonies. And I miss Lake of the Valley lilacs, and I miss fall. Fall um, is the one thing I really miss. Yeah. Well, you'll have to come to our retreat in the fall then. That's I'm really I'm thinking put about that on the list, girl. Yeah, I am. Th it's either going to be this year or next year, yep. but I'm planning on it. Meet all the ladies. So, um, so I had a question about because I was on looking at your different products and things. So here's her website and could you talk a little bit about your products that you sell because you do have a different some different things on there um talk about that and um how you got into the different products well the boutique items comes from the interior design background and the few things i have on there are just pretty much uh fair trade and handmade it's it's all handmade local or not local, but uh, small businesses, you know, throughout the United States. And the Would You Bend is a fairly new product. It started, I mean, literally off the ground in 20, 2019, mm -hmm. the middle of 2019. And it's an interesting product. And I decided to carry it because it's so unusual. Mm -hmm. uh, they're uh, explain what it is. They're, they're, yeah, they're moldings mm -hmm. of wood carvings, and it's actually compressed wood particle mixed with other things. I don't exactly know the formula of it, but you can heat them with the hair dryer. You can bend them. You can cut them. You can sand them. You can stain them. You can paint them, and uh, you just use something like Gorilla Wood Glue or Tight Bond and you heat them up 
put the glue on and you can put them just literally on about anything. You can adhere mm -hmm. them to furniture. You can take a plain piece, a plain old vintage chest and make it look French if you want to. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can put it on walls. I mean, there's a lot of things. I've even put it on a few pieces of artwork. That was going to be my next question. Was yeah. I could mm -hmm. totally see that as I've you know, into mixed media, right? That would be beautiful. Yes, it would be. I've done it to canvas, and, you know, I'm kind of leaning more and more towards wood panels instead of uh, canvas because mm -hmm. of the, the surface is so nice and smooth. Yeah. And, you know, you could literally build a frame around a piece oh, yeah. of wood easily. So, uh, so pretty, Karen. I, I'm, I'm really attracted to the product because there is nothing on the market like it. Yeah. And then uh, this gal, her name is uh, Sally Jo Moore, is the, uh, who has developed this product. She has developed a lot of... Uh, metallic case and she has a powdered pigment that when you put it on a piece of furniture you mix the powder with something like a uh, a sealer like you know big top and uh it looks like liquid gold oh, wow. and so they're they're different there's something different than the market carries in other other places so i'm uh you know i'm playing around with those and the boutique items i don't know if i'm going to keep it's it can be a lot of work you know just in pat keeping track of it packaging it and mailing it out it's you know i don't know you know yeah. it depends on how well it does and yeah. last year was going to be my year to you know trial test it and of course i ended up having no store literally you know even though it was up online so yeah, yeah. It's a different, it, we've kind of changed quite a bit in the last couple of years, the way we're running businesses. So we're, I feel like a lot of us are kind of ebb and flowing through our way through it right now. Um, but you'll, yeah, I would, I don't know. I would just say, yeah, keep an eye on your sales and, you know, see yeah. the, the wood you bend is really interesting. I, I would think that would be a great product. I've not oh. used that I'll yeah, have to but, send you a couple pieces so you can try I'll, it out. I'll buy it from you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, I, um, I just uh, that just seems like it would be so um, like it's already made up. So yeah, you know, it's. Like I don't. It, I don't have to make all the mold. I don't have to make all the. Um, yeah, you don't the, have to use the molds and make it all. Form, and, yeah, you know that is so time consuming, and mm -hmm. I think now time is a problem for all of us yeah. that was if i made a re resolution this year that's it i'm trying to forget time <laughs> <laughs> because it it presses upon us all and uh i think sometimes it causes me to slow down and just become frustrated with you know everything like you're not making yeah. you're not doing enough not doing fast enough. enough yeah and then it just causes the anxiety and you know and of course we know that that's that's not true, but we can kind of jump into our minds that way and start getting those thoughts going around. So, yeah, so that's good that I like where you're going with that. I hope, to, I, I think this year will will be a much better year for me. It's, it last, last couple of years have been, well, the last three years have been very strange, but I'm getting my footing back now and. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, I I'm happy with everything that you know I'm producing at the moment. So now, what else do you see? I know you talked about um, we talked about your products that you had. And you talked about maybe <clears throat> starting to work with um, maybe having a, a private group where you're helping people that are getting older in age to um, just train them on the tech stuff. What else do you see? Like I'd say within the next three years or so, do you have like a big, <clears throat> I, a big I, dream or something that you want to go for? Well, you know, that's what last year caused me to slow down and really think things over because I was all gun ho about really going deep into business and lives and that. And I did three major master classes last mm -hmm. year 
back to back and burned myself out with that on top of yeah. moving. And uh, they were really well worth it because I've, I've learned about revenue streams. I had a very good financial masterclass because I felt like I was built loose or not well educated in a few of the building blocks like building up a, a plan and projections. I mm -hmm. knew nothing about projections fi financially. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and then I took uh, tribe from Stu. And so mm -hmm. it was a, all a great education and I was really gun ho And then I got stopped by COVID and the move and probate courts and you couldn't get into courts. And then the house I bought and thought I was going to move right into fell apart because there was a, an e driveway easement and I didn't want to go to court again. Oh my goodness. So it, it, there were a lot of setbacks, but yet at the same time, I got to stop and think about, Hey, what do I really want to do? Yeah. You know, uh, I, want to get involved in my little community here mm -hmm. uh i've found there's quite a few artists here in the in this community and there's a, a little town well two little towns close together and uh so now, do they have like a, a formed art community where um actually art? they have they have a little art gallery here Mm -hmm. in the community it's only 5300 people in this town yeah and there's also a potter that's in town and has a uh, working pottery oh, nice. place i don't know what you would call it but yeah. uh, i want to get involved in the the art scene here and do a little bit of that and keep my online business and what i'm struggling with and researching right now is facebook is changing so much um the way we are receiving information through videos and that exactly how I want to go about that portion of it. Mm -hmm. Because I, I feel, and from what I'm hearing, things are changing for, you know, the top medias, you know, um, platforms. So. Yeah. So are you thinking like more, you're wanting to figure out how to do more video? I'm or how I'm going to go about doing video actually wow. if I'm going to do you know lives of, as they've been we've been doing them the last few years because I I did stop when I got involved in the move or uh whether or not even maybe going podcast oh, something yeah. like that because mm -hmm. I think it's next year I just heard um Jennifer Allwood just did a podcast on it where uh, Facebook is planning on some kind of podcast within their platform. Okay. Yeah. That of people course. are really, they are, <laughs> of, of course. I mean, and uh, I'm really, I'm, I'm looking at it all to see yeah. what's best for me because if I don't want to do it, if I have to make myself do it, I'm not going to do it on a consistent basis. And if you're not going to be consistent, why bother? Right. So. Exactly. Yeah. And that consistency, I think, is huge um, as far as pulling in your tribe and people that um, kind of connect with you. I think you do mm -hmm. have to show up on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, so that you just kind of you can connect with people that are kind of interested in the same thing. So exactly. So I'm not sure where I'm I'm going yet, but I'm I'm planning on figuring it out this year and hopefully either starting it, you know, mid year or the beginning of next year. So. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, mm -hmm. how things go as yeah. they stand now. So, yeah, yeah. And I understand you're still pulling all of your, you know, your space together. So it'll come together. That's for sure. Um, and then I wanted to mention, too, um, on your website, you also offer your art, um, like, in cards. You can get... Um, right? You can get prints. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also, P, uh, Peace Prints is peaceprints.com is a, um, 
they also do decoupage papers now, but they can take and print any of your art form in, what is the word he uses? Um, they're almost like you would stick on, on, um, gosh, uh, what you line a cover with? You know, oh, like, a paper. Contact, like a contact. Like, yeah, it's like a contact. The back of it has the glue on it, but the repositionable, and you can do anything that you want to oh, on uh, on it. And may, he can make it just about any size, too. Wow. And that you can so adhere cool. them to furniture, a tabletop. Uh, I've even put one on canvas. Uh, no. You know, it, it's a cheap way to do a type of art on something else. You can do photographs and yeah. have it put on there. So he's uh, building his business and he's doing doing quite well. He's in San Antonio okay. and that's how I met him. So very, very interesting. Yeah. You, you have your hands in so many different things, don't you, as far as... Um, just the revenue, you know, you're, I see you're reaching out at all these different areas. I think that's so smart of you. Well, I think uh, what artists don't realize canvas artists is they think they put their artwork, original artwork out, they do a few prints and the public will come and, you know, you can't count on that. You have to have more than one revenue. Uh, in fact, Jennifer Allwood mentioned yesterday, you have to have at least seven revenues. Mm -hmm. So if one fails or lags, one of the other ones is going to pick it up. Uh, so I've been in business long enough to know those things because I used to do custom labor uh, in design work and had a lot of work rooms. And uh, I did that end of the business for a while. Mm -hmm. So you, and part of why I have so many odd different things than you've probably seen on other websites is because being an interior decorate, you know, design or decorator is you get so jaded so quickly mm -hmm. with seeing the same things over and over again, you have to be different and you have to keep reinventing mm -hmm. things in order to stay ahead of the public. Yeah. So. Yeah. So how much of that influence do you think the interior decorating has um, spilled over into your artistry? A lot. That's why my studio's not done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, detail. I'm very detail oriented. We used to do, uh, I worked with another girl that in, I worked through her store. She had a very high end interior design store and we worked for you know some really high-end homes so you get very detail oriented and i find myself doing that in my art and it's been very hard for me to loosen up yes and you it, have loosened up i've watched you You're i've really had to push myself to do it <laughs> i've finally gotten rid of the triple zero detail brush yeah. And it moved up. And I've also, too, when I started, I was kind of methodical. And I started with small canvases, you know, the 8 by 10s and the uh, 11 by 14s. And then the next year, I allowed myself to move up from 11 by 14s into the 16 by 20s and 18 by 24s. Mm -hmm. So once the studio is up, I want to move into some really big canvases and wood panels and explore that because that looks like that's what that's where awesome. the real fun lies yeah yeah I'm getting away from the small art i can't wait to see what you do so, sure. I'm, I'm excited about it and i i hope i do well with it so yeah oh i'm sure you will so mm -hmm. and having all that speak the space when you're on a big canvas you have just all this room to like move and stretch and yeah, I yeah. can't to see. And the studio is a good size. I mean, it was an old single car garage and, uh, but it's like 14 by 22. That's great. So it's great. So my uh, dining room table that I haven't had the part to 
part to part with and couldn't talk my kids into because it wasn't ranchy enough for them. I'm actually going to put it in my studio because I figured I was looking for a table for the studio to work on. I thought, I've got a table, you know, <laughs> I'll cover it with something to, you know, protect it. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun putting it together and, uh, you know, finish it out. And hopefully this year I'll get a patio between it and my storage room where I can paint outside. Oh, also. yeah, the I can see you. Can be beautiful here. Yeah, I can see so. you out there painting away outside. What a great um, atmosphere that'll be, you know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards, I've been playing with landscapes and mm -hmm. I find them really hard. You've really got to concentrate on shapes and that. But um, I'm kind of daydreaming of maybe Texas landscape and, mm -hmm. and Texas life and, and those types of painting. Mm -hmm. So we'll see, we'll see. I can't wait, it'll be awesome. So, okay, so I have another question here for you. And this this has to do with um, favorite movie, book, podcast. And it could be an audible too, because I think that that would be, I think that might be interesting for those watching, especially <clears throat> the podcast part, you know, because we kind of all like similar things. I am all over the place with podcasts. Um I listen to Jennifer mm -hmm. Allwood. I listen to James Wedmore. Mm -hmm. He's all about business. I listen to Jim Fortin somewhat because he is out there and I find what he says fascinating. And if you don't know who he is, he's into not the laws of attraction, but his uh, career was neuroplasticity mm -hmm. and how your brain works mm -hmm. and why we fear so much, especially women. So I find him interesting. And as far as books, um, gosh, again, I'm all over the place with that. Um, I, I do like a romantic novel, but haven't listened to one in ages. The last big book that had an impression on me was um, The Artist's Way by mm -hmm. Julian Cameron. Yeah, that's a, such, a, such a great one, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. I tried it three times and I finally did it in uh, Dion's book club. Oh, and I ended up, and, and anybody that hasn't really should, especially if they're struggling, I ended up taking the daily pages and combining them into an art journal so that I'm doing some type of drawing in the morning along with the art journal or with the journaling and it it really does help. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Yeah. And YouTube right now I'm into the old time radio BBCs from oh. the 40s and 50s. Oh, wow. Because when I grew up, you know, it was as TV was just coming into being, you know, we still were Sunday night listening to the radio. And mm -hmm. they have all those old broadcasts on them. And I've just discovered them. And they've been fun to listen to. Mm -hmm. So. Very cool. So, um, and then one last thing. And then I'm going to let you get back to your life, <laughs> your busy life. Um, when you are creating... So let's say you're out, your your um, studio is completely done, and you have the entire day to paint. What what are you doing? Are you listening to podcasts? Do you like silence or do you like music? What kind of I I listen you? to a lot of music and I listen to podcasts. I, okay. I do those too. I I've tried listening to books, audio books because it's you know gives you. But I get so involved in my paintings that I block everything out yeah. and I don't really hear anything. I don't even realize what time it is until my one dog comes and, you know, it's, hey, it's dinner time. Bed. <laughs> and, I know, and he won't leave me alone. So I know it's at least 5, 530, you know. So uh, he's got a built-in clock. So, but um, yeah, I'm podcast, you know. 
I like podcasts and audio because you can turn it back and go back through them. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so. that's kind of how I am lately as well. I like different podcasts and I'm kind of like you, I'm all over the place with different things and I'm usually listening to art business and marketing. Yeah. So it's maybe not very um, exciting, but for some reason it is to me. Well, it, well, it stands out uh, mm -hmm. when I listen to those things, I kind of stay tuned into it because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times, you know, and they can be boring to a certain degree, but you'll pick up one little tidbit that can really make a difference in your, your business. Like uh, in a master class I took, they mentioned the book Atomic Habits and I read the book. What's and, it called? Hmm? What is Atomic it? Habits, A-T-O-M-I-C. Hi. Right. I can't remember who it's by, and uh, it th there's just so much. Yeah. I mean, you know, to cover. Yeah. You no. Know, without. I think that's. Yeah. You know, I think. I, mean, kind of I watch you. You've grown so much in business this past year, and I I love to see your uh, sales with your sister. Oh, thanks. So she's a blast. So I know I keep wanting to order a necklace and <laughs> I always forget. So yeah, uh, she's awesome. Yeah, she is. She's darling. But her stuff's just, yeah, we'll have her on here one of these days too on the spotlight. Yeah, you should. You should. That would be interesting. But Karen, I just want to say thank you because it's just been such an honor um, to have you on here today and just thank you so much for giving us your time and kind of talking about all your details and kind of behind the scenes. And we really appreciate it. And I'm sure that um, it has touched somebody out there. So um, I love that, you know, your art business is just, it's growing. And um, you've just always been like, you just always move forward. You just, there's nothing in your mind that you can't do. And I love that about you. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you having me. And if there's one thing I've learned at this point, there's nothing to be afraid of. Right. You know, you, you just press on. Right. I learn more from my failures than I do from anything successful. So and that is so true. It's like we fail to the top, don't we? <laughs> constantly, constantly. I'm my own worst critic. So, um, so before we check out, so it is sunflowerhillmarket.com is mm -hmm. your website. And can you tell everybody watching where they can find you? Um, like, are you on Instagram, Pinterest? Tell everybody where you can be found. So I, I am on Instagram okay. and, uh, under the same name and I, I'm just starting into Pinterest. I have some great boards. If you're looking for inspiration, my drawing and painting board is, uh, it's got over, I think, 5,000 posts in it. Wow. So, uh, and there's a lot of interior decorating stuff and mm -hmm. things of that nature in there. And I might still pull some of that in mm -hmm. to the business. I'm, I'm not quite sure how. So maybe in the recycling portion of it. So, uh, but yeah, but Instagram, I'm I'm doing pretty good in right now. That's it good. seems people are uh, more interested in Instagram yeah. at the moment. Instagram is so good for any of the um, if you have a creative business like most yeah, of us watching it really is. artists, you really need to put some focus on Instagram if you're not. Um, yeah, I, I, I post them there daily. I, what I need to do is I need to open the shopping portion of it. And I haven't. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to get myself settled before I can you get will. more thing into my life. So, yeah, you'll get there. I mean, oh, I will. Be gentle with yourself, too, because you've had such a huge move in the last year or two. So be kind and gentle. And Thank you. sometimes we forget to look and see what we've accomplished rather than we sit and we think, man, I have the, all of this to do yet. <laughs> but Karen, I am here to tell you, you have done some amazing things, a huge move. Um, and I just, it's been such a blessing to watch you grow. 
Um, so are, well, is there anything else you want to add? Well, I'll th I want to thank you because my improvement, my art, a large part of it is you. You're always mm -hmm. great at giving a critique. You know, people are very kind in the communities. And, you know, whether it's really mediocre or, or whatever, people are always kind and it's great. But when I ask for a real criticism, and that's the wrong word, a real critique of something, you always give it to me. And, and that's has really tremendously helped me. That's, that's so good. So good to say. Um, it's, yeah, it's always hard when, and you'll find out once you start teaching, <laughs> you know, it's, it's sure. hard when people ask, so you, you don't want to do them a disservice. No, but, you, but you could, it's a disservice if you don't tell someone how it can be improved because yeah. you wouldn't be asking if you knew what to do. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's nice, nice to be pointed in the direction. Thank you. And it's been just, it, it really has been such a blessing just watching you grow. I just so enjoy having you inside the club. And uh, well, yeah. I hope to, to keep, to start being there more. So yes. well, I, I've gotten behind on everything. So that's okay. We knew what was going on in the back end. So <laughs> you have grace with us. And uh, hopefully I'll get to see you sometime. I know I'll be, um, uh, at Dion's in Texas. I, yeah, so, no, but that, I'd rather so. come and see in October and see the fall. Yeah. And, and the part of Ohio you live in is quite beautiful. So oh, yeah, that's love, the year. Yeah, I, in October, I, it's beautiful. I would love to come and see it because I haven't seen fall in quite a few years now. We would love to have you. So. Okay, Karen, well, I'm going to let you get back to your busy life. And once again, thank you so much. Um, those of you that are watching, please make sure that you go out. I'm going to put her website back up. Everything's under Sunflower Hill Market, and it's sunflowerhillmarket.com. Go check out her art and all of her products. Just some wonderful things there. Um, and go connect with her online and all the places, okay? All right. Kelly, you have a good day. We'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks.